Let's try a question since we've been doing this for quite a while. Oops. So another application of the Hall effect here, we have a long bar, and I'm just showing sort of a cross section of this bar. So you can imagine this bar connected to a circuit somewhere, and it stretches out along the x-axis. And I measure the voltmeter. Voltmeter 1 measures the potential difference across the length of the bar. And voltmeter 2 is measuring the potential difference perpendicular to the bar, OK, perpendicular to the length of the bar. And the magnetic field is pointing outward. So there's some applied magnetic field due to coils not shown pointing outward. Voltmeter 1 has a reading that is positive, and voltmeter 2's reading is also positive. What's the sign of the mobile charge carriers? Again, think about the steps. See if you can figure out the direction of the electric fields. Try both cases. See which one gives you the correct volt voltmeter readings. OK. Bare majority for answer number two. OK, so how would you figure this out? The first thing, again, you have to figure out is the direction of E parallel. We're told something about the voltmeter reading here, that it is positive. All right. The rule, what's the rule again for a voltmeter? If the positive terminal is connected to the higher potential, it reads positive. OK. This is reading positive. So which end is at the higher potential? The right. OK. So we have the high potential over here, low potential over here. Once you know that, this, this meter is going to give us the uh, direction of which electric field, parallel or perpendicular? Parallel. So once you know this, what's the direction of E parallel? Points that way. OK. That's E parallel. So we've got step one down. Now let's try step two. Let's think about positives moving in the direction of E parallel or negatives moving in the opposite direction. So let's try positives moving this way. Here's a positive moving in the direction of E parallel. The magnetic field is pointing out, so the magnetic force would be what? Be up, right? Be up. So on the top, I would get a buildup of positive charge. On the bottom, I would get a buildup of negative charge. But does that agree with voltmeter reading too? No, why not? The electric field in this case would be pointing down, which would mean that this is the higher potential. But this end is connected to the negative terminal, right? Again, the rule is if, if, if this is, we know this is reading positive. And so if it's connected to, it's got to be uh, the case that this is connected to the higher potential and this is connected to the lower potential. But if we do this case, it's not. So that's not going to work. That's not going to work. Okay, so that's ruled out. You must not have this situation. The only other possibility, and let's just go through it to check it, negatives moving that way, right? Negatives moving in that direction would have a force in what direction? V cross V is down, but what do I do? Flip it because it's a negative. I get negatives on the top, positives on the bottom. Does that work? You see what I have to go through here? I mean, this is, these are the steps that, it, this, this is one of these things where you just, it's hard to just take a guess, okay? It's hard to just look at it and see what the situation is. You really have to kind of go through the procedure and, uh, and, and try it out and just work it out, you know, step by step and see which one gives you the correct case, okay? Questions? All right, well, you will have some practice on this for the homework upcoming, and in an upcoming lab too, you'll have a, a problem, whiteboard problem similar to one of these as well. New phenomenon, new phenomenon. If it has mobile electrons in it, and I, I take this bar of copper and I move it, just take it and move it through a magnetic field, and the magnetic field's pointing out of the board. What's going to happen to the copper? Which of these diagrams is going to best show the state of this copper bar? 
Think about the mobile charges inside the bar. They are moving with the bar along with the entire bar, right? So think about what would happen to them in the presence of this magnetic field. Okay, we have a pretty sizable majority saying answer number three, because if you think about the mobile charges inside the copper, we could, much like what we did with the Hall effect, we could just focus on the motion of, say, a single mobile charge, one of these, a single uh, mobile electron inside this copper bar. Well, it's moving initially with the rest of the bar uh, in this direction, but it's in the presence of a magnetic field. So what's going to happen to it? What, there's going to be, acting on the bar, a downward force, right, a magnetic force. V is that way, cross B, V cross B is up, but you multiply by negative charge, flips it. And so if, if you end up with these negative charges being deflected downward, essentially, then you're, you're looking at essentially the entire electron C being shifted a little bit due to this magnetic force, and therefore you're going to have a buildup of negative charge on the bottom, a build a deficiency of electrons and therefore a build of a positive charge on the top. And when does it stop or does it stop? You keep moving this at a constant speed and this polarization occurs. Does it keep polarizing and polarizing and polarizing the longer you move it? What happens? Exactly. Just like the Hall effect, just like the velocity selector, we're going to get an electric force canceling out the magnetic force, right? So we have the magnetic force downward, but now we have, because of this polarization, an electric field. The electric field in here is pointing which direction? Down. And so if there's an electric field, that's going to exert a force on these negatively charged electrons that is up. And so we run, once again reach, uh, well, it's not really a steady state in this case because there's no charge flow and there, there's no current here. But it's, it's an equilibrium situation. It's a static equilibrium situation even though we have a polarization because the two forces are balanced out. Okay? And if you stop moving it, the magnetic field goes away but the, and then the polarization goes away as well. Okay? So that's kind of interesting because just by moving something through a magnetic field, we can actually create a polarized metal and therefore an electric field. Let's just try it in the other direction. You move in the opposite direction, what's going to be the polarization now? Electrons, the electrons have mass, so how big an, how big of an effect is this? Or yep. Well, the, the electrons are very light, right? Electrons are very light compared to the, uh, the atomic cores. And in fact, I mean, you have, um, if you want to think about, let's go back to this first picture. You have a lattice of positively charged atomic cores where essentially almost all the mass of the atom, that's where it lives, right, in the nucleus of the atom. And then kind of superimposed on this, you have these negatively charged electrons. There's going to be, in, in this case, when the bar is moving this way, there's going to be a downward force on the negatively charged electrons. There'd be an upward force of the same magnitude on the positively charged pos uh, atomic cores. But these are very heavy compared to the electrons, right? So it's the electrons essentially that shift and the, the positive cores hardly move at all, okay? Okay, 10 seconds here. Okay, so we're gonna get a polarization in the opposite direction, right? We've, we've, we haven't changed the direction of the magnetic field. We've just shifted the direction of the velocity. We're gonna get uh, a force in the opposite direction, V, cross B is down, but QV cross B is up, multiplied by negative charge. So we end up with negative ch charge built up on the top, positive on the bottom, okay? 
Not surprising. What if, uh, by the way, can we use this effect to tell the difference between positive holes or negative electrons as the mobile charges? What if the mobile charges were positive and the velocity was that way? What would you get for the polarization? Would it be different? V cross B is down times a positive charge, which is doesn't flip the direction. We get the same polarization. So this effect doesn't tell the difference between a uh, sign of charge carrier like the Hall effect does. Okay, but it's still this polarization that exists. Well, this is interesting, but maybe we can do something with this. Let's set up a situation where we have a bar of metal that is uh, riding along. We're going to move it to the right. And it's riding along two metal rails. Okay, so it's in contact with these two pieces of metal. And uh, it can slide easily. And in between the two metals, we place a resistor. Okay? Think carefully. We've just created a situation where by moving this thing through a magnetic field, we're able to create a polarization. So see if you can make an analogy to something you may have seen before. Is there going to be any conventional current flowing through the circuit? And in fact, there is a, a loop here that's made, right? Because we're connecting this bar to these rails, to this resistor. So there is a loop. Are we going to get a current in this loop? And if so, what's the direction going to be? Maybe the thing to do is figure out the polarization first and then see if you can make an analogy to a situation you've seen before. And we have, well, somewhat of a majority, 60-30, 60, 61-35-2. Uh, counterclockwise, some people are saying 8 and 9 for some reason. Uh, counterclockwise, so let's see. If you have, first of all, what's going to be the polarization? What's going to happen at the top? What's going to happen at the bottom? What do we get at the top? Positive charges, right? Because V cross B, if the mobile charges were positive, they'd be forced upward. If the mobile charges were negative, they'd be forced downward. So you end up with that polarization. Well, what does that kind of look like? Where have we seen something like that before? Battery, yeah. If you could just redraw a circuit that looks similar to this, you have a... Positively charged battery here, a negatively charged terminal of the battery here, connected to a resistor. And in this case, conventional current is going to flow which way? Counterclockwise, right? Capital I comes out like that. Yeah, remember, conventional current comes out of the positive, as in the negative. So, by the same reasoning, we should have a conventional current flowing that way. Let's look at the electric fields in here. We said that if you have a, uh, a charge flowing, well, let's just look at the direction of the electric field. Electric field is going to be pointing downward, right? And the electric field here is pointing what direction? The electric field in the resistor is pointing what direction? Downward also, yeah, because the electric field in the rest of the circuit has got to point in the direction of the conventional current is driving the current. Well, wait a minute. The electric field here is pointing in the opposite direction of the conventional current. Is that, can that happen? Yeah, the right. For round, first of all, the round trip potential difference has got to be zero, right? So uh, the potential difference here is negative, and then when you go back here, the potential difference here is positive. And that's exactly what we have in the, in the case of the battery, right? In here, the electric field is pointing that way. And the electric field in the battery is pointing from the positive to the negative. So, what, so imagine just for the sake of argument that the charge carriers are positive, just so we don't have to deal with the signs. Positive charge would be moving that way, moving that way in the direction of the electric field, and then moving this way upward in the opposite direction of the electric field. So what... In the battery, that's true. Here's V. 
what's supplying the force or what, what's causing the electric field, or excuse me, the, the charges to move in the opposite direction of the electric field inside the battery? What was that called? Okay, that's the EMF, right? The EMF is the work done by per unit charge by something. Work by the, what do we call that, interaction? Anybody remember? A non, let me erase some of this, a non-Coulomb work, a non-Coulomb force, right, per unit, uh, times a distance per unit charge. And the battery that's provided by the non-Coulomb, meaning non-electric, okay, not due to static charges. And the battery that's due to some chemical reaction. In here, what's that due to? What's driving the charges the opposite direction? The magnetic force, right? So the magnetic force is essentially providing, playing the role of an EMF. And we could even figure out what, how it, what it is because we say that the magnetic force is equal to the electric force. QVB, again, is equal to Q times E. Cancel that out. And then if we knew the length of this bar, we could figure out that potential difference and say that delta V is E times L or Q times V times, or excuse me, V times B times L. This is called motional EMF because essentially the magnetic field is creating a polarization which can drive a current just like an EMF or a battery can drive a current in a circuit, okay? So magnetic, by having a, moving a bar in a magnetic field, we can create a polarization. Then we can actually get it to drive a current and that's going to be useful for various technological applications, and we'll talk more about those next time.